This is one of those cases of a song that I'm so surprised hasn't been found and yet is so close to being found, there's just some weird barriers here and there. And on top of that, because what I'm about to talk about is, as of right now, really obscure, the information I've come across is currently disorganized and sometimes just wrong or unreliable or I just can't find anymore. So with that in mind, I wanted to try and find out more info about La Canción de Alicia, or Under the Stars, while also trying to sift away the misinformation, compile all the verifiable or at the very least credible info in one organized video and try and get things straightened out as best as possible. But keep in mind, there are some details that are missing, confusing, or just straight up wrong. So with that in mind, let's get started. On the 5th of July, 2021, a Facebook user by the name of Hito Mate Triste made a post on the Lost Media Perdidos posting, a Facebook group about Lost Media, where they asked everyone if they knew the following song. Take a listen. The song itself isn't very strange, in fact it's kind of surprising just how much of the song is currently available to listen to. You think a song with that big of a sample would probably be found by now, some way, somehow, but it hasn't. The video itself, however, is a bit odd, as it's hard to imagine the correlation between this song and Alice in Wonderland. However, because of this, the song has been dubbed La Canción de Alicia, or The Song of Alice, by the Spanish-speaking lost media community. Unfortunately, this post never got much attention, and so it faded away. Eventually, someone reposted it on Reddit and different Facebook groups, which soon garnered a much larger audience. Many people have commented that it sounded familiar, yet no one was ever able to claim to know where it was from. Others liked the song itself and just wanted to find the full version just because they liked the music, and so they joined the hunt into finding where this song came from. Now there was renewed interest, and so people began to dig deeper, and the hunt began first with Hitomate Triste, the original poster. Many people wanted to ask him where he found this video, or if he was the one who made the video in the first place. Those questions would remain unanswered as Hitomate Triste's Facebook page would be terminated due to violating Facebook's policies. Some have claimed that his page was taken down because he had posted shock photos and videos all the time, but this is unverifiable. There's no evidence to suggest that this ever happened. Honestly, it just sounds like someone wanting to add a bit of creep factor into this whole story, and I'm not buying it. Luckily, someone recorded the post and the video itself on their phone, and this is the only capture of this post ever existing at all. And for that matter, this song. As to who recorded this song from their phone also seems to be up in the air. There's some claim that it's from a guy named David Gutierrez saying that he was the one who recorded it because he's been looking for the song for a long time, which doesn't make sense. And then another claim from an owner of the Facebook group itself stating that he was the one who recorded it. So two conflicting reports, but in the end, it doesn't really matter. The origins of the video itself is likely to be lost forever, so there's nothing to work on there. With that in mind, many people turn to speculation on the song itself, mainly two major factors. Number one, the audio itself is in poor quality. This means that whoever made this song must come from an underground or indie background, as usually these bands are startups and rarely have the resources to get good recording equipment. Again, this is just speculation, as the poor audio quality could be from the recording itself, as in whoever recorded the song in the first place. 
This most likely isn't a straight rip from an album or single, however due to the genre of the song itself being an alternative sounding rock song and the fact that it's a song that no one's heard of before, it can be safely assumed that the band was indie in some way. Secondly, the singer himself, many have pointed this out and I'm sure you've noticed too, that the singer's English doesn't seem to be that of a native speaker. He has a very heavy accent that many have pointed out to be very Hispanic or Latin sounding. In many ways, I'm willing to agree. Honestly, I can't help but be reminded of my own father, who is a native Mexican that moved to the States and learned English as he lived here. His accent sounds roughly the same as this man's accent, though not necessarily. There are some idiosyncrasies here and there that don't really match up. However, I don't want to exclude the possibility of other regional dialects and other foreign accents. To be frank, most people who agree that this sounds Hispanic are Hispanic or Latino themselves, so we might just be a bit biased. If you think this sounds a little different, or maybe from another completely different regional dialect that wasn't mentioned before, leave a comment down below. I'd love to know your thoughts. Regardless, these two pieces of speculation, one that the band is likely indie, and two that the singer is a non-native English speaker, is all we have to go by. And so the hunt began with indie bands from every Spanish-speaking country, specifically Argentina and Chile, as most have agreed that their accents specifically sounded like a Chilean or Argentinian dialect. Eventually, this led people to a YouTube channel literally called Bandas de Chile, which is a channel that uploaded several random behind the scenes and guerrilla style videos of rock bands performing live, mainly underground and indie bands. This channel is actually a goldmine for many unknown and lost indie bands of this era. Eventually, as people scour through the channel, people were able to find this one video called Gin and Tonic, which showed a band rehearsing a song. Take a listen. And brought about the curiosity of those who were hunting down La Canción de Alicia, as many people pointed out just how similar this band's lead vocalist sounded to that of the Lost Song singer. Let's compare the two. So, do they sound similar or not? What do you think? Well, regardless, this comparison alongside the fact that the band was indie as fuck, I mean, look at the place that they're at. That's indie. Well, this was enough for people to continue digging towards this direction and investigating even further on the band Gin and Tonic. And I'm actually kind of shocked that this was found in the first place. I mean, it's exactly what people were looking for. It's like using a metal detector to find gold, only to find a sign planted into the sand that says gold here, start digging. Whether or not it was fool's gold, however, wouldn't be fully known until we dug further. Being a band with general obscurity, you won't be able to find anything on this band via Google. It doesn't help that when you look up gin and tonic, you get either the alcoholic drinks and the recipes, or other bands that have the same name. Thankfully, this video has something we really needed, a website. Oh yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, thankfully, we have the Wayback Machine Internet Archives to go to, and this time we're going, well, way back into the past, all the way back to 2005, where most of you were probably born. I looked up the statistics. Why are you guys so young? Stop. Get older. Anyways, this is where the band's vocalist Ricardo Mendez writes a bitter announcement stating on the webpage itself that the band would no longer be together. They're breaking up. This was all, of course, written in Spanish. The contents of the announcement don't really mean much in terms of our search, but it is worth noting just how frustrated Ricardo was with, well, everyone involved. He states his frustrations with the other band members 
how they were focused more on their own interest, how their music was not appreciated by the mainstream, how practicing with each other was nearly impossible due to distance, and how he felt like the world didn't really appreciate what they provided, and how soon enough, later in the future, they might be more loved than they are now. Overall, it's just a very unpleasant breakup, but it's worth noting for future purposes. What's most important about this webpage for now is that Ricardo gives his fans lyrics to an unreleased song, which is both in English and Spanish, further cementing the theory that whoever sang La Canción de Alicia was a non-native speaker. Ricardo fits that description perfectly, as he is bilingual. Eventually, with Ricardo's full name, someone was able to find Ricardo's blog spot, where he boasted about his new British band, which I assume is gin and tonic because he mentions it in the second paragraph, which made me a bit confused for a second until I did a bit more digging and I found out that Brit pop is a subgenre of rock that was really popular during the mid to late 90s, so any mention of British music is likely stemming from the fact that gin and tonic was largely a Brit pop band, or at least that was the kind of music they were aiming for. Getting back on track though, Ricardo gives us two websites to check out his band. Unfortunately, both don't work, and the one that says pure volume doesn't even have any of its pages archived. The one that says band is the Chile though, has one archived page, which gives us more info on the band, along with an album that they had released during this time called Free as the Sun. We also now have names for each of the band members. Marco Latermo, who is a lead guitarist, Kamal Musalem, percussion, Francisco Alfaro, bass, and Juan Pablo Peña, piano. But aside from that, nothing would be really extracted from this website. We couldn't ask Bandas de Chile more info, especially pertaining to who recorded this video or how they came about to obtain this footage, but unfortunately, this channel hasn't posted anything in 15 years, so it's unlikely that whoever owns this channel is still active. The website, which is likely correlated to the channel itself due to the same name, has also been down for some time. It's kind of funny to note that even though the band broke up in 2005, this one video of them practicing was uploaded in 2006. It probably doesn't mean much, I'm sure they were still broken up by this time. They just uploaded random old footage even though the website clearly said that they broke up. It's just a funny little detail. Thankfully, we don't need to rely on this channel or the website as soon enough a YouTube user by the name of Yo 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 came forth. <laughs> sorry, that's stupid. Yo 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 came forward and claimed to have more music by Gin and Tonic, who up until this point had no music associated with them whatsoever, despite them saying that they had music released. Yo 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 says that they used to work in the same place where Gin and Tonic recorded and rehearsed, elaborating further, saying that they'd used the recording room several times in Santiago. I'm assuming they picked up on the fact that La Canción de Alicia might have been made by Gin and Tonic and dug up as much info as they could from wherever they worked at, likely some sort of music store of that kind. Eventually he released a few of the band's demos, giving us a clearer and higher quality version of their music that was previously heard. At some point, Yo 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 manages to find the album, Free as the Sun, which gives us, for the first time, a direct rip of the band's entire discography. And to be honest, I kinda dig the music. So if you're into Britpop, I, I guess, check it out. Yet the most substantial info that came out of Yo 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 was the fact that Ricardo himself was apparently contacted by three of his viewers. Yes, seriously. Three random people had apparently contacted Ricardo via the old hotmail left in the band's website. This was a major breakthrough in the search, finally coming in contact with one of the bandmates who could give us answers as to who exactly made the song, and if the song was still available somehow. And the answer? Well, unfortunately, the replies Ricardo sent back and forth to these three random people are a bit aloof and pretty vague. The first response someone got was simply a message by Ricardo that said he didn't know what gin and tonic was, which is just hilarious because he's replying from the band's old hotmail. But this also signifies something that I mentioned would be important earlier. 
See, Ricardo had a terrible history with the band, and it's very clear that he hated working with them, either because of creative differences or something else entirely. Either way, it's a negative experience for him. Obviously, he doesn't really want to talk about the band because he isn't very proud of it and he's just moved on. Or maybe he just had a negative experience that he doesn't want to relive. All of this is understandable, but things get way more confusing when Yo-Yo-Yo -Yo states the second response to the next person's question that contacted him was that he doesn't claim ownership of the song itself, referring to La Cancion de Alicia. But this is where things get tricky and very confusing. The way he says this statement almost makes it seem like he doesn't like the song because he made it a long time ago and therefore it's not meeting his expectations as an artist now. However, the third response, he clearly, according to Yo-Yo-Yo, -Yo, states that he does not own the song, so why even be vague about it, unless he just wanted to be deliberately aloof? But things get more confusing later on. Ricardo now suddenly showed interest in making a cover version of this song, a sort of 2.0 version as he claimed it to be. This was incredible news, as we would now have a complete version of the song itself from the theorized original singer. He said he would upload the song on the weekend of the reply, and so October 31st came, and a new channel by the name of Richard Vox was made just a few days prior, which proceeded to upload the cover song for Under the Stars, or La Cancion de Alicia. And that's where things end. Ricardo is not the original vocalist. And even if he were to lie, I think it's easy to compare the two songs and see that not only are the voices different, But so are the accents. Even if it were argued that Ricardo is just lying and doesn't want to claim this song for petty reasons, the person who sang this song has a much thicker accent than Ricardo. Also regarding the addition of new lyrics at the beginning and end of his cover, that could just mean Ricardo is just a talented musician who knows how to add in his own melody and lyrics to a fractured song and honestly, it's pretty seamless. Speaking of... Let's wrap things up here with some final details about Gin and Tonic. Firstly, Ricardo would like to state that there were in fact two vocalists throughout this album, but since he's already stated that he didn't work on Under the Stars, it's likely this is a superfluous information. Even if it weren't, Ricardo has lost contact with all of his bandmates, which makes sense since the experience was so rough. And lastly, Ricardo has moved on and formed a new band called the Fernandos, so if you want to check them out, links are in the description. When Ricardo was asked if he knew who the creator of this song was, he left one final cryptic message, stating, perhaps it's best to leave a bit of room to the imagination. Wait for the video. And for some reason, Yo-Yo-Yo -Yo -Yo thinks this statement means that Ricardo really is the original creator, but is just ashamed of the song and just won't take ownership, despite the fact that he's already stated to him that he didn't make the song. I just doubt it, honestly. And so we reach the bitter end of our current thread of clues. All that for, well, seemingly nothing. There's still believers out there who think Ricardo is the original singer, and a lot more than you might think. How many more? Well, the search for La Cancion de Alicia sort of stopped after Ricardo's cover song, which makes me think a ton of people thought this song was found, which is just wrong no matter how you look at it. Even if Ricardo was the original singer, the truth is that this is just a cover of the song, not the original, which is what people wanted in the first place, so it's still out there, somewhere. 
So why make this whole video if it ended up not being the correct place to search? Well, again, this whole video was made to compile all of the evidence thus far, and sifting away the incorrect schlock and organizing to the best of my ability all of the info that was reliable. Plus, I wanted to renew interest in this missing song. Lots of people I admire on this website do lost media content, and they're the most passionate people I know and the most curious people as well. They sort of inspired me to make this video because, goddammit, I want to find this song. That's the nature of lost content though. Sometimes you follow a thread all the way through from beginning to end, only to end up nowhere or back where you started, which is part of the fun of lost media investigations. It's why Jeff the Killer's face keeps popping up every year. No one can find it, and as soon as we get close to a thread that could potentially be what we're looking for, well, shit, we're back to square one. Interest is the fuel that keeps these hunts going, so I implore you to continue the hunt. If you love this song, I encourage you to track it down wherever you can. My best bet? I'd look for a Spanish rock band from the 90s or 2010s. Spanish because, well, as someone who grew up in New York City surrounded by several different kinds of Spanish-speaking folk, let me tell you, this singer sounds Spanish as fuck. But I could be wrong. Maybe he's European of some other kind, who knows? Oh, and why 90s and 2010s? Well, these were the times I feel indie bands were the most popular, so I really wouldn't be surprised if that's where this band is from. Sure, the quality of the music may sound old, but that doesn't mean the song is. But hey, that's just a hunch, and unfortunately, that's all we have to go by, our hunches. And I hope I didn't ramble on too much, and I hope I was able to gather all the important bits and didn't miss much. But again, if I missed anything, please leave a comment down below, or if you want to give me any theories, Spanish or English, let me know. Oh, if anybody's willing to transcript this, by the way, into Spanish, please let me know. I really do hate transcripting and I don't want to do it. Hopefully, I've got some of you interested and investigating with what little evidence we have. Y'all are smart, honestly. I wouldn't be surprised if we find this song by the end of the year. But that's all for now, and that's all I can give. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for checking out this video, despite how long it is. And thanks everyone for sticking around. I appreciate all the wonderful comments and kindness that you've given me for these past few months. It's been rough, and many of you probably know that if you were, well, sticking around. I've gotten better, and I will continue to get better, because I know I can get better. And I hope that you know that about yourself, too. You can do it. All right. I'll see you guys later. Love you all so much. Happy New Year, and I'll see you next time. Love you all a ton. Goodbye.